r slash ask reddit what did you do that made you question your own intelligence fixing a clogged sink by removing the drain pipe and thoroughly rinsing it underneath the tap of the sink i just removed the drain from my father did something similar we were replacing our garbage disposal rewiring shit and one of the pipes had a significant drip we gutted almost everything under the sink so it's basically just a basin with a hole that opens directly down to the cabinet floor. He put a bucket under the one remaining pipe and it collected around a gallon and a half of water over a few days while we were still getting parts. We successfully rewired everything. And before he was able to put the new disposal in and put the pipes back, the bucket had to be removed and emptied. This mother ducker took the bucket and dumped it all back in the sink, where it proceeded to flood the cabinet and some of the wiring. The look of resignation on his face was priceless. I locked my car keys in the trunk of my car. Hours later when I got my keys out, I proceeded to reenact what happened to my friends, complete with actually locking my keys in the trunk again. That's a special kind of stupid you got there. Know what makes it better? When I was closing the trunk during my reenactment I said so from now on I'll never close the trunk without ensuring I have my keys. The little beep my car makes when you close the trunk and all the doors are locked sounded more like a small laugh. My co-worker asked if there is lactose in eggs. I thought to myself they both come from the same animal. So maybe, for 5 seconds, I thought milk came from chickens. The fridge is an animal. Eggs go in and eggs go out. You can't explain that. I have a key fob for my car. It's set up so that if you hit the lock button once, it locks the car. If you hit the same lock button again, it locks it again and honks the horn so you know you've locked it for sure. The thing is, I always want to make super sure that it's locked. But sometimes I come home to my condo super late. And my parking spot is right under someone else's window. I noticed that if the key fob was farther away from the car when I hit the button twice, the honk was not as loud. So out of consideration, I would always wait till I was halfway up the stairs to do the double lock honk. What a great neighbor I am. Anyway, after maybe 2 plus years of doing this, one time my girlfriend and I were in my condo and I realized I needed something out of my car. So I go down there but when I get there I realize I had forgotten my keys. Well, I had my phone. So I called my girlfriend and asked if she would stick her arm out the window with the key fob and unlock my car. She mistakenly hit the lock button twice and my car honked. Really loudly. Even though she was all the way up on the third floor. It was only then I realized. The honk was always the same. It only sounded softer when I was farther away. Because I was farther away, I have a master's degree. This one is special, because it wasn't just a momentary lapse of thought. Like so many in the thread, you reasoned that shit out and stuck to your conclusions for two years. The problem arises because we rarely have reason to reconsider something we've already figured out. When I was growing up, there was a strip club between my house and the Walmart that we went at. The sign outside the club said exotic dancers. When I first saw and interpreted this sign, I was probably like 6 or something. So I just thought there were probably like foreign people dancing. Like something out of a kind of racist animated cartoon from the 50s. I probably didn't realize that this was a strip club until I was probably like 20 or something. I was just driving past it one day and then said holy shit that's a strip club. Once you define something one way in your brain you just don't need to reevaluate it. Made some soup on the stove in a saucepan and poured it into a bowl and some of the soup dripped down the side of the boiling saucepan so I licked it. Put some hot boiling sauce into a shot glass to let it cool down for tasting. Do something else for 10 seconds. Spot shot glass are right I wanted to check the taste. Proceeds not to gently suckle on it, but down the still almost boiling fatty fluid into my mouth like cold vodka. One time I microwaved a single mozzarella stick for 30 seconds. It seemed an appropriate amount of time. When it was done I popped it in my mouth to eat it. It was molten lava hot. As it seared the inner workings of my mandible my brain began screaming get rid of it. So I did. By swallowing it, I felt the burn travel down my esophagus and into my stomach. It hurt so bad. It was only made worse by my friend laughing hysterically at me and exclaiming that even dum dums know to spit it out. I once threw a stone high in the air directly above me. Absolutely no reason for that. Just because I could I guess. 
Instead of walking away, I kept standing there, looking at the stone falling down until it was too late to move. I still managed to put my hands up protecting my head. Hurt a lot anyway. I don't think I'll ever win a Nobel Prize. I once threw a stick up into the air and moved a few feet away and it still came back down and hit me right on the head. Worked in kitchens for over a decade. Put a metal pan in the microwave to heat something up. Three times now, I have taken the cap off of a tube of super glue and put it in my mouth to hold it. Three times. That's just absent mindedness. Yesterday I was waiting for a friend in a store, killing time googling with my phone. I reached in my right front pocket, and noticed that my phone wasn't there, had a moment of panic. This is while I was looking directly at my phone, held in my left hand, so the right literally didn't know what the left was doing. I went my whole life thinking the saying was the ghost is clear instead of the coast is clear. M21 just found out yesterday at work lol. Well to be fair your version is accurate, albeit without real situational meaning. How about, for all intensive purposes, didn't realize it was for all intents and purposes until I was a 26 year old grown man. I once had a brain fart and forgot that porcupines were animals. I was hanging out with my family and my niece mentioned that her favorite animal was a porcupine. And I laughed for a good long time before explaining to her that porcupines weren't animals. I'd gotten them mixed up with pine cones. I have a graduate degree. My niece was maybe 6 at the time. She schooled me. While helping my girlfriend make dinner one night we needed some lemon juice and she asked me to squeeze a lemon. Now logic would dictate you cut the lemon in half before you squeeze the juice out of it. But not this brilliant mother ducker. No sir, I just squeezed the shit out of it. Rolling and palming it in my hand until the peel finally broke. Releasing the lemon juice into a bowl as requested. Needless to say, when she turned and saw what I had done she was amazed, probably by my impeccable ability to follow orders. She then asked how I ever managed to live alone. And I'm pretty sure that's why I'm not allowed in the kitchen anymore. Well technically you should roll the lemon around and squeeze it up a bit before you cut it. Makes it easier to juice. So you're not a complete idiot. I drove over a mattress. It was in an alley in a puddle. I thought I would glide right over it. Thing got stuck in my tire well. Had to call a tow truck to lift my car and beat it out with a hammer. Next morning found that it had punctured my front left tire and had to get a new one. Did another dumb thing by thinking I get a whole new wheel not just tire so ditched my wheel by the dumpster and then drove to the garage on a flat spare only to be sent home to get my wheel also. It was a bad day or two. And this kids, is why the wheels of economy turn. Sent a text to my friend telling him he left his phone with me. I have found about 6 phones till now, so I would call the last dialed number and tell them hey, I don't know who this phone belongs to, but if you can pass them a message to come here and pick up their phone it would be awesome. I would hang up, and get a call on their phone from the person I just talked to, to tell me that hey someone found your phone, without fail, event once. I did this once, I dialed the last person they spoke with for more than 30 seconds. The lady had no clue what was going on. I explained myself 3x and she finally was like I guess it could my son's phone. I told her to look at the number I dialed from and she seemed clueless. I frequently see a man cross a 4 lane road near my home. We have a fairly similar schedule and I see him often. He's well known in the neighborhood and he's deaf. No big deal. I once slowed down as he crossed the 4 lane and driving. White out. Downpour rain and I though to myself. Or oh man. He doesn't know it's raining because he is deaf. I'm a sign language interpreter. This made me laugh so hard because so many people have moments like this when it comes to deaf people. You are not alone. Oh right I shouldn't wave to him. He won't see me since he's deaf. The best is going to a restaurant and telling them you're deaf. Only to be handed a menu in braille. I've had a deaf friend literally write out on a piece of paper I'm deaf and have the person go oh okay sorry and give him braille. You just... I can't. A couple months ago, my husband and I went on a walk. There are a lot of trails where we live and a couple of lakes. So we walked down a trail to the lake, turned left up another trail, and ended up at the top of a street. We start walking down the street and I realize there is a house that has a wishing well in their front yard like we do. I point it out to my husband and then I realize they have the same truck we do. 
2. I point out the truck and then I realize that we were in front of our own house. It wasn't my brightest moment. Your story reminds me of one from college that was alcohol induced. It's 1am on a Saturday morning. And I received a phone call from my roommate. That's odd. People don't call me. I pick up the phone and the following dialogue with my drunken roommate ensues. Me. Hey Evan. Are you okay? Evan. No. I can't I don't know where I am. Me. What do you see? Evan. It's black. And there's lots of tree laying down. Me. You're on your back. Sit up. And tell me what you see. Evan. Still lots of vomiting sounds. Trees. I think I I think I she a sign. Me. What does it say? Evan. My okay. McCanny. At this point. I go to my window and see Evan next to a pool of his own sick. You see. We lived at McCanny Hall. And he had passed out directly in front of our dorm. A few years ago I googled do the people upstairs have a cat. And it has never left me colon. Yours is my favorite in this thread. Went to a bank to withdraw money. Bank teller asked me how I would like it and I said, in cash. Bank teller just stared at me, while my friend is dying of laughter. Meanwhile, I stand not understanding the issue. I did the exact same thing at Subway. Literally just, huh, what do you want? Me. A Subway? I also said it like she was the stupid one. LOL. I was sitting in traffic. And I noticed that all the other lanes were moving while mine hadn't budged an inch. I craned my neck trying to see what the hold up was. And finally figured out that I wasn't in a lane at all. But had been patiently waiting behind a line of parked cars. My dad and I were returning a U-Haul trailer once. He got into the far right lane that happened to be a line of cars parked. I noticed. He didn't. My dad is a pretty cokey dude and gives me a lot of shit when I do dumb things so I wanted to humble him a little bit. We sat there for a good 2 or 3 minutes. He starts yelling and honking his horn. I haven't laughed so hard in a long time. The look of defeat on his face when he realized what he had done will stay with me forever. Don't touch. Wet paint. I touch. The best is when it's not wet and you get to feel like you outsmarted them. This is what it's all about. Wanted to light a candle, struck a match, changed my mind about which candle I wanted to light, and decided to light a Yankee jar candle instead. Couldn't get the lid off with one hand. Stuck the lit match in my mouth so I could use both hands to get the lid off. Couldn't smell the scented candle. Could only smell singe nose air for days. Speaking of candles, I once thought my candle was making a weird sound so I put my ear close to it to listen and burned some of my hair. Turns out it was my water bottle making the sound anyway. I'm a doctor. Can't read clocks. Well I can't read your prescription so we're even. I still wonder if pharmacists get special training to read doctors prescriptions. How did you know the patient faked the prescription? I could sort of make out the signature. A few years ago I could not figure out if the new electric stove was on or off. I was familiar with flame stove so I stuck my hand flat on the heating coil. My hand had burnt circular stripes all over it. The stove was hot. You gotta splash a little water on it and see if it dances. Or just a hover hand without actually touching the element. Often when I'm closing a door quickly I will hold the edge of the door rather than the doorknob. You may be wondering, isn't your hand in the way of closing said door then? The answer is yes. I have slammed my fingers in doors too many times because I refuse to hold the ducking doorknob. Made a cup of coffee, got out a cereal bowl, poured cereal into my coffee, then put the cereal box back in the fridge. I've got the bowl, got the milk out of the fridge, cereal out the pantry, made a bowl of cereal, put the cereal in the fridge, milk in the pantry, then went to sit down on the sofa to continue watching TV, cereal still on the counter in the kitchen. I've done this. One morning my vision was all blurry so I started freaking out and called my grandma to take me to the doctor. Then like 20 minutes later realized I just forgot to put my glasses on. I've worn them since first grade and totally forgot for half an hour. I had an opposite experience one time. I woke up and was taking a shower and realized everything was super clear. And holy shit I can see without glasses. A solid 5 minutes went by before I realized I slept with my contacts in. 
I can imagine the disappointment that followed. I once forgot to take my glasses off for a shower. At least they got a good cleaning. But dry water marks are the worst to clean off. So this happened a couple days ago. I got home from school tired as hell so I decide to take a nap at around 5 o'clock. Well it turns out to be really deep and when I wake up my clock says 7.50. This freaks me the duck out because school starts at 7.20 and I quickly get changed and sprint out to my car to drive to school. As I'm driving there is surprisingly little traffic but I don't think anything of it and I pull up to the school parking lot. It is completely empty and I'm confused as hell so I walk over to two police officers and they inform me that it is actually 8pm not am and I realize that I probably look like the biggest dumbass around. I just yelled at myself all the way home about how ducking dumb I am. I'm always the most confused person ever when I wake from a nap. Probably because I'm not used to it. I had that happen to me when my work schedule was constantly changing. I woke up around 2am, showered, dressed, made lunch, got in my car, started it, turned on the headlights, and realized I didn't have to be at work for another 12 hours. I told my boss I needed a consistent schedule from then on, which I got, and the following week I took a much needed vacation. Told my friend that the 4th of July celebrations must be beautiful at the place we were. We were in Linlithgow, Scotland and I was talking about the palace and lock. Friend is Scottish. For obvious reasons they do not celebrate the 4th of July. I'm English have lived in the US for over 20 years now. Don't feel bad because I have yet to have a the 4th of July when someone hasn't earnestly asked me whether my family in the UK celebrates the 4th of July. 9 out of 10 times. It's the exact same person, my mother-in-law. Until I was 16 I thought that dark meat and white meat came from different turkeys. They used to but after the turkey civil rights movement they started into breeding and we can now get both types of meat from one turkey. Looked for my cell phone for a good 2 minutes or so, was in my left hand. A couple of years ago I was on the phone with a good friend. She noticed that I was getting kind of irritated. So she said hey, you're sounding a bit mad, have I done something to offend you? And I responded no, I've just been looking for my duck eyeing phone for the last 10 minutes and can't find it. She burst out laughing. I felt like an idiot, I burst out laughing. The other day I overslept, and I was rushing to work. I don't know if it was the tiredness or the stress of being late. But on my way there I turned the car around because I thought shit, I think I left my car keys at home. I got most of the way home before I realized what an idiot I was. I took the wrong train to get back home and didn't realize it until I had already sat in it for more than half an hour. Twice. It was the same wrong train that leaves a few minutes before the train I wanted to take. I used to commute the exact same route for years. A one hour drive took me five hours until I got home. When I realized that I was sitting in the wrong train again, I cried. Couldn't find my glasses. They were on my face. Also walked into a pole. Not a small pole. When I was cleaning out my shed in the back, I stepped on a rake and the pole smacked me in the face. Literally. Like the cartoons. It happened three more times before I came up with the bright idea to move the rake moved from a computer based career to a people based career after 25 years, dealing with the personalities, motivations, agendas, social hierarchy and corporate hierarchy, this is some pretty goddamn tough math, adding to this, some people are naturals when it comes to this kind of thing, when you're exposed to the type of person who handles coordination of this type effortlessly so they can get what they want, it makes you question your competence in certain respects. I once was hanging up paper on a cork board and the only thing we could hang them up with was thumbtacks. I thought it was a good idea to stick my hand in the bucket of thumbtacks and grab a handful. Every elevator going down in a busy NYC hotel was already full of people so I decided to go up. When I got to the final floor I accidentally got out of the elevator instead of just staying put. First day of university I go out to explore the campus. Only to find the same odd piece of litter in the corners of multiple buildings. Almost seemingly strategically placed. Even more oddly, it was the same exact piece of cardboard trash I kept seeing. Strange, but probably just leftovers from an event where the university handed out something stored in them. 
Upon seeing the fifth or so improperly disposed of piece of cardboard, I take it upon myself to be a good citizen and properly recycle the misplaced trash. A simple enough task that even I couldn't screw up. I casually walk to the corner, kneel down, pick up the piece of trash and... I can only imagine what people must have thought after seeing me react to the piece of trash that had somehow outsmarted me, gluing itself onto my skin. I was like a cat with a piece of tape on its paw, flailing wildly, too afraid to scream. The only sound that could be heard was cardboard flipper flaps echoing down the halls. After the fourth or fifth good swing of the air, the cardboard remained permanently affixed to my skin and I had finally begun to realize what was happening. I, a superior intellect, a student of a well-respected university, had been caught by a mousetrap. GG. Go into teaching because happiness and pride in my work is worth more than money. Turns out actually no money is pretty important. I used to boil eggs in my kettle. One time an egg cracked so I had to clean it out. To see if the water was eggy afterwards I decided to smell the steam as it came out. Unplug a USB without ejecting it. People joke, but once I watched a guy lose his thesis single copy doing this, the crying didn't fix the flash drive. Relying on a single copy inside a USB drive is really stupid. I was walking home from school with a friend when I was 15. We passed in front of someone who said hey to us. I looked at her, looked at my friend and asked her who she was. My friend gave me a really weird look and said are you serious? I was like, yeah, after looking a second time, it was my best friend. My best friend who go to the same school and was waiting for the bus. I looked at her two times, wondering explicitly who she was and I did not recognize her. It made me question my sanity for a long time. Walked into her door. It wasn't a door. It wasn't even made out of glass or wood. It was a ducking brick wall. And no I wasn't trying to get to platform 9 and 3 quarters I just generally walked into a brick wall. It's over. Thinking face. This actually happened a few days ago. I got lost along the country road and was fumbling through my map to try and find a way back. I saw that there was this back road that would take me directly back to the main road. Great. I thought, this will get me home in no time. So I eventually find said road and just as I begin to start traversing it, I come across a sign that said, main road, is currently not accessible via this track. Obviously any sane person would take this as a sign that this path was blocked and I'm just gonna have to keep going back the way I came. But for some reason, I thought that nah or, I bet it's fine, I bet this sign is pretty old and hasn't been removed yet, it'll be fine I I. So I decided to go along the road anyways. It kept going and going into denser and denser forest and meanwhile the sun is starting to go down. But I haven't hit a dead end yet. So I'm confident that everything will be fine. But then suddenly out of the blue. I come across a big barricade with road closed emblazoned upon it. I felt like such an idiot. I had spent the last 40 minutes driving deep into a forest despite the fact I had a clear warning that the road was blocked. There was no reason I should have done this. I just randomly decided that no I was gonna be right. Useless dumbass. You don't always get to decide what's right. And to cap it off, I was down to a quarter tank of fuel. My huge ass diesel took a big chunk out of my tank and now not only did I have to find my way out of this pitch black forest. Seriously even with high beams you could barely see shit. I also had to find my way back to the main road and then home. All without running out of fuel and becoming stranded on an obscure back road. I can't remember the last time I was ever that stress out. There was a very serious risk that I could get lost and could have died out there and no one would be any the wiser. All because of some stupid mistakes on my behalf. Closed a valve and shut off water. To my neighbor's apartment. His valve was next to mine. Side by side. The thing is the valves are clearly labeled with apartment numbers. And the entire time I stood there fiddling with the valves it didn't occur to me I'm closing the one with the wrong number. Somehow I even passed a sanity check making sure that the number on the valve equals the number of the apartment I occupy. How? Mr. Brain. How? Stayed at an Airbnb this weekend. It took me a full 2 minutes to figure out how to get the water to come out of the shower head instead of the lower spout. I was pulling. Pushing. Twisting. Bopping. 
and manhandling every surface of that bath hardware until I figured out you just pull down on the tip of the spout. I took that shower in shame. Whoa, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.